let's let's I want to you know how I am I'm ADHD so I want to squirrel but I want to come back to some pot in just a minute but you threw it out there so we got to talk about it a little bit it's that stoned eight theory what what was how did you tell me your understanding of it well, I think that like you said that we're you know come to a point where we're come to a lull in evolution and man either wandered upon a poisonous plant or a mushroom or something and had an experience and therefore created, you know, religion and whatnot and was able to help man evolve into the next step, the next, you know, process of evolution and become, unlock that part of the brain that we hadn't been using. And, that, you know, that's... before, even before that, I think that we split from the fungi before that. So, you know, I know mm. that's bizarre, but I think well, it was put I, here, I, God put it here to, to help speed along our species i mean if if you go study just the scientific perspective i think that there's a lot of uh research to suggest that human beings and mushrooms we have a very common long time ago ancestor but we're we're the same kind of thing as them in terms of in and out air and probably more than what most people realize but from, but from what i understood about that you know whenever human beings the human being brain experience what you're talking about they like say they were out on a hunt and they were chasing say cattle wherever they were at let's say wherever cattle grow you know or, or there, wherever a cattle was a land race these people were there and were chasing them and from their manure from the from the cattle or whatever something similar to a cattle or aurochs or whatever they're called you know one guy you know the brave one of the bunch picks it up and eats it and of course you know um from what people suggest, you know, you and I talked about the studies going on up there in Indiana and a bunch of other places as well. But there is a, a growing movement to understand what that mushroom does to the human being and how we've outlawed it in the past how many every years, and it's changed society. I mean, it's changed evolution. I mean, because we have been using this. Every civilization has been using this particular medicine for years and years and years and years, 6,000 years if you're biblical and 200,000, 400,000 maybe further back if you're not. And, you know, it changes the way the human being operates. Now, you know, we have all this anger and people are depressed and you know, there's all this stuff going on, but there's a growing number of people – and studies that suggest that this thing could probably have huge therapeutic effects for the human being. And the only reason why we're not getting it right now is because there was a bunch of people that had differing interests. And it, it created this situation where we are. But I'm going to let you talk about it for a minute. I kind of came to the end of where I can go with it. Yeah, I mean, I, it's it's insane that, that something like that's considered taboo. You know, it's more, you know, taboo than, than the illegal part of it. So I see, you know, it's how most people see it. You know, they think, oh, mushrooms, psychedelic, they go all crazy. They lose their mind and whatnot. And I think what it is is, man, that our society has gotten so far from the natural order of things that the human mind, like we're all taught to be these megalomaniacs and to be these CEOs of these corporations and treat people like shit and I think it's affected the human psyche to the point to where people are going and using psilocybin and it's rewiring their brain back and it, but it's rewiring it back with compassion to where they're able to feel empathy for other people and I think it's changing their perspective or maybe I don't know reopening their mind or reactivating that part of their mind with the with empathy and, and the emotional shit like that the side of that of understanding the stuff and I don't know I think it's what society needs because like I said they, they, it seems like they reward the most awful behavior you know we treat each other like shit and they reward that behavior and I think with you know getting back to the mushrooms and and whatnot I think it, it allows your mind to reopen that part of the brain where you feel compassion for people and, you know, shut off that part to where you're constantly being, you know, greed is God type deal is what I think, man. You know, it, it, I don't know if you, this is a kind of a, a weird question because you could probably expect that from someone who would name a podcast outside of the grid, but I wonder if there are um, strains as such of mushroom like there would be with cannabis. 
they have a little bit different effect or it's a different taste or I mean I've never funny you say that man it's just like cannabis they have every continent seems to have them for some reason or another so and I think this is a really good uh, you know I'm no expert at all on cannabis or I'm just a human just living the experience sharing the information that I know but there's a guy named Alan Rockefeller and he goes all around the world and he does you know the mushroom thing just like you know the land race for cannabis and yeah, and I, I think that each area, just like cannabis, would be is the answer for that area. You know, you, you go just like you would eat local honey. You know, you go you move to a new area and your allergies are going fucking crazy. You probably want to go find some local honey, eat it, help build up your immune system for that area. Cause that's going to be that area. You see what I'm saying? That's kind of how I see it, more of a local, holistic approach to it is what I think. I absolutely there's stronger ones on different continents for uh, for different reasons. Maybe there's more hospitable climates that they have to live in so they get the stronger shit, you know what I mean? You know, but there's definitely there's thousands of different strains in, of of mushrooms. You know, you 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 you, you explain that part or, or made the insinuation about it being a medicine and that's that's that goes back deep. That's deep history right there. I mean, you know, and of course Sometimes people, if they had, uh, you know, a certain illness, then you may not be able to get the what they need here, and you'd have to go somewhere else. And, and from what I understood, it happens with that as well. And, of course, mushrooms aren't just uh, – there's – it's actually a toxin that gets us to this, quote-unquote, spiritual experience. And, of course, uh, let's talk about that for a minute. I mean, it's probably not best for some 17-year-old to go off and – I mean, maybe it is. I don't know. Hell, I don't know. This is a question for you. I don't know. But get your opinion on it. But you, you probably need to be around someone that knows how to know, to make sure you got good quality. It's like with weed. I mean, I want good quality. I want someone that can tell me about the experience. And I don't want to eat too much or too little, you know. But there's a difference, though. There's people that want a microdose. There's people that want to have that overall experience i mean how would you interpret the use of it i mean how should it be used spiritually should it be you know i want to get fucked up and go riding in a scooby-doo van i mean what 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 do you think well i think it should be both recreational and and medicinal that way it's just available and like you said the safe part of it's probably the most important that you know what you're getting so then you can dose accordingly and you can't, you know what I mean? We'll start there. And then like you said, having a, a supervised, if, you know, if you're not experienced with it, having a supervised trip basically where somebody that has experience with it knows when that, hey, this is normal. They're ha- you know, this is not normal. It's called medical. Let's get, you know, but it's definitely being an adult about it. Just, you know, you don't, the first time you drink alcohol, you don't drink the whole fucking bottle. Same thing with with that, you know, you just in moderation, you know. And like you said, it, it would help to have somebody that is there to to basically help out. That's sober. That's not experiencing the 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 drugs. But I think it should be used by everybody. Like I said, I think society is so far from its fucking roots that you know when I see people do it, you just, it like changes their perspective on life and how they look at things. And it's like, holy shit, man! It's literally opening people's eyes as to you know why we're really here. We're not here to go work a nine to five and be a slave our whole life. That's not what this is about. You know, I think that's the coolest part when you see people, like you said, their third eye open up and then they actually go on their real journey and go go find what they're really looking for in this lifetime. Not just you know, a job. I, you know, there's this thing that I that about the time that I first experienced it, and I, I was in college and I was in a physics course. I never will forget about it. But like, it didn't. What when I took this was like uh, like three or four days after I had this experience I'm about to explain. So it was several days later. So it's not like, I, but I wasn't like just you know, it's not like a alcohol. It's not even like pot. I mean, because it's like a, such a different experience. But anyway, I was sitting in that physics course, and I and I, the guy was explaining about you know, the speed and rotation of the Earth around the sun, and I was like, holy shit! Because I'd been in Earth science class before, and I was like, I was sitting there, I was like, holy shit! I'm on a ball of dirt, rock, and water, 
spending 66,000 miles around a huge ball of nuclear fusion. And I was like, what the fuck does that mean, man? I couldn't even fucking believe it because, you know, you, I, I, maybe it was like preceptions from religious upbringing or, you know, or just uh, not ever really thinking about it. But the fact that I'm this little human being with a hand and I can look at my hand and I know that I'm spinning around this ball of fusion, nuclear fusion, it just blew me the fuck away. It made me look at this whole thing differently. And I look at another person and go, holy shit, they're doing the same thing I'm doing. We're, we're all doing the exact, we're all doing the exact same thing, man. Yeah. When, you know, you talk about rewiring the brain on this thing, you know, um, and, I, and that's kind of, we watched a little bit of a video, he shared it with me, of those, a guy that's done a huge amount of study, and I think it may even be the Indiana guy, or a guy that was there, and did some research there, but what, what do you, are you able to explain any of the, just a little, just a big picture, thumbnail of any of the research that they're doing with Psilocybin. Yeah, and and at Purdue, man, they've been and they've been doing it for years, for decades. The the guy up there, he's been they've pretty much mapped out, you know, your your all your cannabinoid receptors, and what they've been able to do, as far as on the medical side of it, and is with all your antidepressants and whatnot, they've been able, you know, to t- fine tune that area of the brain as far as and you've seen a lot of new drugs and new methods introduced with mental health and that that's kind of leading the way and you know they've been they've experimented with all kinds of different drugs and and whatnot and like you said different receptors turning some off and turning some on and trying to find that key basically because it's you know it's it's complex as far as what needs to be turned off what turns on and whatnot but they're mapping it up there and they've they've come pretty far as far as getting it all mapped and you know what each receptor does and and whatnot, and I mean they've come a long ways as far as knowing what chemicals and what what's going on in your brain when you're feeling certain emotions and whatnot. I mean they've come a long ways. So let me just uh, ask you this: There's a couple of uh, some like cannabinoids again. You know, there's um, I always love the smell of Kush. I mean, everybody talks about Kush. If you look it up, it's from the Kush Mountains. That's a Landrace from up there. Uh, but then there's Hawaiian. <clears throat> uh, I think there's some Hawaiian breeds. It's not like an olive, you know. And, of course, I think it's also maybe the soil that is growing in there as well that makes it extraordinary. Maybe that's what it is. But now, uh, um, do, is there any – are you familiar enough to know where, like, say, uh, skunk or one of the one of your favorites came from? I mean, can you – can you identify the origin of something besides Kush? You know, like where it was grown at originally. Oh, my favorite. I don't know. Yeah. My favorite. My favorite is is going to be a hybrid. Uh, okay. But I'm with I'm with you. I, I, Kush is probably going to be my 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 favorite. If you're talking about land land race and whatnot. Um, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to go with Kush. I mean, there is some Afghani that's pretty good, but man, that shit puts me on my ass. It's a heavy, it's a heavy sedative feeling for me with the Afghanis. Um, I love growing the Afghanis, man, because they grow, they're real tall and lanky. You know what I mean? So you can, I mean, they're real yeah. fucking pretty plants, but they're just too strong for me. But yeah, I'd say Kush is probably, you know, that'd be my favorite as far as the, the flavors and the potency and the height gives you. I'm definitely with that. Northern Lights you know, is all right. That's a different. Okay. I'm sorry. It's all right. I mean, it's all right but... what, 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 where is, do you know where it comes from? Northern Heights? I Hindu Kush? It's, it's a Kush? Hindu Kush from, yeah, from India? Yeah. Afghanistan? Okay. Like you said, from the Hindu Kush Mountains? Is from what, what yeah. I understand, but there's also a place in Africa that was you know, controlled by the people called the Kush people too. You know, it's like the Ethiopia area, Ethiopia, yeah. and kind of towards central, more towards the central yeah. side. It could be, I, from my understanding, it's the, from India. You know, from the Indian mountains of India, Afghanistan. Now, is Kush is it? Is it a? It's kind of. It's. it's is it a? Is it a sativa or an indica? I guess it's a 
somewhere in between. What do you know? What like a if there's like a, like a a normal cush, and what what makes an IndyCar sativa? Let me just ask you that. I mean, is it, well, when you run that you, testing, if it has like I know you're going to ask me this. I'm high. Um, there's a certain uh, chemical they're looking for, terpene, and if it's above a certain threshold, that's what determines whether it's an indica or a sativa. 